Trailblazers today. We got to hear from Joe Cronin and a number of the superstars as well. As Chauncey said, he expected more from the team, and this one was really hard. Really? <laughs> are, are you the only one? That is uh, was interesting to me. They're just... Overall, there felt like there was a lot of word salad coming you know, out of the facility I, today. I hate dishonesty, and I understand in sports sometimes you're in a must lie situation. But my God, you're in the middle of a a this the third full year of your rebuild, and next year is going to be no different. And this is the the part that drives me crazy. You draft like a 19 year old point guard that's undersized and can't shoot, and you have the balls to stand up there and tell me that. He's not going to have any growing pains. That's from your own mouth. Your GM is like, well, there's some guys that hit the ground and they just don't struggle. Yeah, because that's never happened with a six-foot point guard in the history of the NBA. And now I got Chauncey coming out and being like, well, I just expected more. No, your assignment was to lose as many games as possible and it will be next year too. So I just, I hate the, at least when the Astros, remember when the Astros were tanking and they were like, look, we understand this sucks. We're going to lower ticket prices. Please bear with us. The The Sixers did this. The Sixers are like the process. Like, we're going to stink, but, you know, we're going to draft Embiid. We know he's not going to play. We, like, just give us some time. I wish the Blazers just had the balls to be like, we're bad. We're going to be bad. But in a couple years, guys, we, we, we have a plan here. We have a plan. But when you sit here and, and feed me this line of crap about, being competitive and wanting to be competitive and this being such a tough year to swallow. Stop it. Stop. And, like, are we, are we all dumb? Like, do, do we think that this team where your second best player is, I, I don't, God, who's your first best player? Simons? Simons and then Grant maybe or Aiden? Yeah, I mean, stop it. You have, you have a collection of a lot of guys that should be the third and fourth best player on your team. And the whole and, fill out a nice rotation for well, a contender. That's what we're doing. We're like, yeah. well, you know, Chris Murray. And if know, everyone's Delano healthy Batman. and everyone's playing their best, then we might be competitive. Is is kind of where we. Yeah, it just that stuff drives me bananas. Don't so you kind of have to lie though, because like the one time we ever saw a team not lie is the trust the process 76ers. and we absolutely ripped them for that and ripped the front office for it because we didn't like how they came out and told us exactly no, I, what they were doing. I liked what the Sixers did. And like I mentioned, the Houston Astros did it. The, the Astros were the best ones that did it. They're like, we aren't going to be good. We are going to be bad. And we're they, they, they said yeah. it's going to take some time. Problem is your commissioner doesn't want to hear it because yeah. they don't want you. They don't want your fan base to have to hear it. They don't want owners going to their fans and well, saying, you know, we what? won't be good because then it's incentive not to come. Well, 65 to 7 percent of your audience uh, tuned out this year. They sure did. You know, at least the, the, the attendance at the games was OK. Mm hmm. Uh, I went a couple times this year, and it was never. Yeah, was, I saw numbers that they didn't slip too much attendance wise, like two or three percent, not very much at all. But but well, ratings wise, and, and tickets were dirt ass cheap, and yeah, they were that be given too. away. And by the way, announced attendance is different than you know people that that are through the gate. But it wasn't it, it wasn't a complete uh, ghost town in there. But it was on the TV side of things yeah. as as much as seventy percent. And by the way, like that's this is now three years. Don't let them fool you. This is three years yep. of top ten picks and rebuilds, and mm -hmm. next year is going to be another one because this year's draft isn't very good, and next year's it is, and so you're going to be bad again next year. the The year to win eighteen games is next year, so be ready for for this next year when and when, be prepared when, to do it because like I, I I I start to wonder whether whether Cronin has the stomach to. To wear that publicly, like I like, hope so, but like I would hope so too. But listen to this from today. He said we're on the same page on that. A given night, we want to be competitive. A year like this one was hard because we weren't where we wanted to be on a win loss perspective. We want to get better, oh. but the rate matters. We're going to have to recalibrate that after this off season and get a more accurate view of what it is going forward. You shut down half your roster with tendonitis. Stop it. So you're just talking sideways exactly. now, and, and I don't get it. And that's all. I'm, and that's the part. And and maybe you feel like you have to lie. But as a fan, I don't want my intelligence insulted. And when you're sitting, God knows how many guys on a nightly basis with sore whatever, we again, we know the assignment. We we understand. Lose games. So when you when you win 21 games, then you try to come out and tell me how disappointed you are to win 21 games. Meanwhile, you're sitting there with what the third or fourth best odds in the ping pong balls, which is what the goal is. And next year it's going to be even worse. Because next year, without all the injuries, you should be better. Another year of Scoot. Scoot showed signs of life. Mm -hmm. like, no, no one should be punting on Scoot. It was. But a... if you don't want to be better, then how do you handle this? Exactly. And like, I, it... I don't know if he knows how to navigate that. And so we'll it's, it's going to be weird because next year you're going to have to actively try to be worse because this team should be better. 
It's another year of growth and development. Sharp isn't going to miss as much time as he did. Simon shouldn't miss as much time as he did. Scoot's going to have less growing pains, right? Aiton hopefully will is, it continues to come into his own. Like there's this this will be a better team next year. It should and, be, and yet. The goal next year has shouldn't, shouldn't be to do that. Shouldn't be to do it. The goal next year should be to win seventeen games because you got Cooper Flag and um, um, God, who's the other kid, uh, Ace Bailey. Mm-hmm. Like next year, supposedly has three or four kids that are franchise changers, and so the goal next year is it, it should be to to be bad and then pull an Oklahoma City, and now Oklahoma City is the youngest number one seed in in playoff history. So, like, that's the goal, but they're going to come out and they're going to tell you a bunch of crap next year that isn't true, and then they're going to start shutting guys down and finding new and creative ways to try to fudge the margins to lose more games, and that will be the fourth year in a row of being an absolutely irrelevant basketball team while being told, oh, no, we're, we're going to be competitive. I mean, Chauncey said that he thought they were a playoff team. I mean... And again, are, are, are we are we just saying things because we think people want to hear them, or did we really believe that? I don't know. It, it, it maybe they maybe they do that if they really believe that and that's the goal, then God bless them. Because like Vancouver for Ducks line, they're not going to take next year. They're going to be competitive and surprise people. Then get ready to suck and be mediocre for the team you have in the NBA. In the NBA right now, look around. This and it's been this way forever. Collections don't win. Star players do. There is not a single star player on this roster. Not a single one. I would agree. Simons isn't a star. Sharp he, isn't he, a star. Sh- yes. Scoot isn't a star. Yeah. Aiton isn't a star. Not yet. You have a bunch of players that should be the second or third best team. Mm-hmm. And supposedly there's no one in this year's draft that's that's that guy. Maybe maybe you do. You know. So find, why why would it change? But next year is is the one. So if, if your goal all of a sudden is to take this roster that you have and be like, oh, we're just going to get healthy and grow. Cool. Enjoy being the the seventh seed. And didn't we just get done with a decade of that? Yep. If you're gonna spend four years being bad, then my God, people are tired of purgatory. If you're gonna suck, suck the right way. Exactly. Yeah. And so you know whether it's 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 this year finding the diamond in the rough that ends up being that game changer, or next year saying I know it's gonna suck, but we're gonna go through this one more time next year and try to get Cooper Flag and try to get someone that really changes it around, and that's how you end up being the Oklahoma City Thunder. So I, I just I, I I hope at in, in, in at at one center court I hope that there is a whether they tell it or not I hope there is a clear path moving forward and not this weird two timeline thing because my God they did that for how many years with Dame where they told us one thing and they operated on another and they even said we can't run two timelines and we said we've been trying to to thread the needle for too long and we can't do that anymore but so but here we this, are. But we we still hear from Blazer fans that thinks that this group somehow can grow together. There isn't a top. What if we're going to say the best player on the Blazers is is either Simons, Grant, or Aiton, right? Like um, you can you can debate that. Is that a top fifty player? Yeah, we had someone on the Vancouver Four text line ask us, "Do the Bla- Blazers have a top forty player?" Okay, I don't know if they have a top fifty. They go top forty. I, I but I, I think it might be outside of the top fifty. Where are we? I mean, S- somewhere right around there is where those guys start to land, and you've got a couple of them, but they're not take over games and weeks and seasons worth of of superstars. There. So you start looking around the league at teams that are good, and it's not one of those guys; it's two. We don't have one. Have a, and I'll give them the, it's a nice collection of uh it's a nice collection. They've I, got some real good talent, but yeah. it's not it's not it's not a difference maker. It's not win in the playoffs talent. I don't know if there is a difference maker. And again, maybe they grow into it, but again, if, if we're doing the sharp and, and scoot and Simons thing, well get ready to undersize guards. And by the way, we'll see in I don't know, four years when those guys kind of round into all-star form. And if we're doing the four-year thing. Be bad again and go into next year's draft and go for the Cooper flag. Go for the guy that may actually be a franchise changer. A franchise changing player and then put him with the nice collection of guys that you have the Scoots, the Sharps, the Simons, the Aitons. But you need your Luca, right? You need your mm-hmm. Shea. 100%. You need your Giannis. It's, it's not good enough to have. Oh, I, I don't and know. And just because you've had a couple shots and they haven't landed doesn't mean you need you stop taking shots. You have to keep trying to find that guy. Yeah.